In this tutorial, I'm going to be looking at how to apply textures to a Rhino model, and then we're going to be making some renders out of those. So I'm going to switch to my rendered view, and right now we're just seeing the model all one material, and then we're seeing some of the curves in there. And one thing that I like to do that helps me visualize the surfaces a little bit better is to go into the display mode and then turn on surface edges. And this just outlines all the um, surfaces and boxes you drew so it's a little easier to see them. So we're going to start by applying a material to the topo surface uh, using built-in Rhino materials. So we're going to jump over to our layers panel and in Rhino you can apply materials in basically two ways either by layer or by object. So you can either apply it to all objects in a layer or to individual objects. So we're going to go to our topo surface layer under the material column. We'll click that empty circle there. And then we're going to click on the selection menu up here and then click on this plus icon. Then go into the special folder in there and you will find grass. Click open and then click OK. So that applies grass to that layer and our topo surface is in the layer so it has the grass applied to it. Now zooming in, it seems a little bit too small, so in order to make that bigger, we're going to go back to uh, the grass, so select that circle. Then under the texture category where it says color, click on the name of the bitmap, uh, so this box will come up. So under the mapping, the repeat is how many times the texture repeats in a certain area. So the smaller the number, the bigger the texture will be. I'm just going to make that, I'm going to change that to 0.5. Alright, the scales that that is looking a little bit more realistic. Uh, so the next thing I want to do is the foundation. So I'm going to again click on the material for that. Now I'm going to, for this I'm going to use a custom texture. So instead of going up to this menu up here and then clicking the plus icon, can click on so where it's empty here where there's a color so click to assign and then you can go find a texture that you can download so anything you can find online of a, of a texture uh, you can select as a new material so I've got some concrete textures here and I'm going to choose this one hit OK so you can see it's applied the texture there and actually I'm okay with the scale there so I'm not going to change that so the next thing I want to do is the floor. Again, pop up the uh, material editor. This one I'm also going to assign a custom texture. I'm going to go to uh, wood planks. Okay, and click OK. Alright, so you can see here the scale is kind of way out of proportion, so to change that we're going to go back to the material editor, click on the name of the bitmap image, repeat, so now we're actually going to increase this number so we can get a smaller texture. Okay. Alright, maybe I'm going to try 12. And I'll go one more, go to 15. And I actually want to rotate that, so what you can do in the rotation is type in an angle. Okay, so that just rotated it 90 degrees. Next thing I want to do is the upper floor slash roof. Again, I'm going to apply a custom wood texture to that. Just hit OK just to see what it looks like. Again, it's a little bit big scale-wise, so I'm going to go back. Maybe bring that up to 3. And I think I'm going to rotate that again. Alright, so next is the columns. Again, I've got a custom texture here. 
and this one right now you can see it's uh, oriented horizontally so I'm going to go back and change that to vertical by rotating it 90 degrees right, the scales looking good see next is these cables this I'm actually going to use one of the Rhino materials so I'm going to click plus icon, go to metal, then click on woven. Hit OK to see what that looks like. This is a little bit small, so I'll put the repeat down to 2. Now this also has a bump map applied to it, which gives it a surface texture when you're doing a rendering. So since we scaled the the color, the bitmap image, we also want to scale our bump map to match it. Alright, last thing I want to do is the walls. I'm going to give it a stone texture. Again, I'm going to apply custom material. Hit OK. I'm just going to make it a little bit bigger. Alright, so we've got all the materials applied, but I want to show you a few tweaks you can make in case some of the materials and the textures aren't scaled properly. So you can see on the floor down here, this is kind of how I want uh, the size right now, but when I go up to these sections here, uh, these are looking a bit smaller, even though they're applied on the same layer, so they should look the same, but they don't. Uh, so one way I can do that and do some custom scaling on that is select the object. If you go to the Properties panel under Material, so this I want to keep this by layer because I want it to use the same material but I want to apply a different texture mapping, which is the next icon here. Texture mapping is how the material is applied, basically, orientation and scale-wise. Uh, so what I can do, actually, when this comes up, this should usually look like this. So there will be no, uh, no mapping applied to it. So usually for a square object, you'll apply a box mapping, which basically has an imaginary box that is wrapping around the object and it's projecting you know from all the six sides onto your object so we're going to click the box mapping go up to bounding box and then we're going to click world and yes for capped and in the texture mapping properties box on the right you have something called the XYZ size and by changing these values you can precisely control how big the texture is so we're going to change our X and Y to 30. And then the Z, which is the last one, is basically how deep it is. And if I zoom in on that, you can see that it's really squishing that texture in. So I'm going to change that. I should get to match it to the other. So you can see it's sort of is the same scale as the other ones. So you've got these two floor sections below, and I want to make these the same as the one on the top. So what I can do is click this one on the bottom, and then on the texture mapping on the side, click Match Mapping, and then click the object above. So that's basically matching the texture alignment of this object to that one. Then I can do the same thing for the object underneath, and that lines up all of my textures. Again, you can use this technique to alter like the certain scale of, of the textures on a certain object, say I wanted this wall to be um, twice as small as this wall with the textures. So what I can do is make sure I'm in the texture mapping and I guess because the way we've um, applied the textures before it already kind of sets up a mapping for this. So here are the values that it's uh, sticking to it right now. So I can make these twice as small as before and that basically made the image twice as small as the wall over here. So the next thing I want to do is set up our lighting. So in the display on the right, we're going to turn on shadows, then I'm going to turn on the sun panel. So you can either type in sun or in the render tools, you can go in this little sun right there. So 
We're going to turn our sun on, turn our skylight on. Now for the positioning and the time, you can click location. You can either set uh, one of these locations here. You can type in your latitude and longitude manually. Or you can click here and it should try to find your location based off of your IP address. And that's kind of the same thing with the date and time. You can click now and it'll jump to the actual time right now. I'm going to switch that so we actually have some light. So this takes in your current position and adjusts the shadows accordingly depending on which way your model is oriented. So if you want to have manual control over that, you can check manual control. And you can adjust this to any angle that you want. But for now, I'm just going to uncheck that and leave it on the date and time mode. So the next thing I want to do is set up some views that I want to render. So the first one I want to do is of looking at the building from kind of far away at eye level. So I'm going to rotate my camera down sort of near the ground level. So the trick is to get sort of your vanishing point between the floor and the ceiling because that'll basically place like where your head is. If your model is located kind of at zero, like if you built it uh, starting at zero, the origin, what you can do in the properties is set your Z location and Z target to five or six, which will roughly place like where your head is. That's not going to work for me because I moved my model into the topography file, so my elevations are a little bit different. But you can adjust those over here in the properties. So I could set the Z location to like six, target six. So you can see mine is a bit higher than that, so I'm just going to adjust it manually. So the next thing is the lens length. This works the same way as a lens on a regular camera. Uh, the larger that number is, the narrower your field of view, and the smaller the number, the wider the field of view. So if I change this down to something like 35, you can see that it moves me farther away because my view got wider. So then I can zoom in, and I can actually see more of my model. So I want to save this view of the model. So what I can do is right-click on the camera up here where it says perspective, go to set view, then named views, and I'm going to save this as, I'm going to call it uh, perspective, just ground, click OK. So anytime I move around, I can always go back into the camera menu, go to set view, the bottom here will be the custom named views that you've saved, click on perspective ground, and it'll reset my camera. And the next one I want to do is of inside of the building. So for this one, I want to change my lens length to something a bit smaller so I get a wider angle. Because I'm inside, I want to be able to see more. So I'm going to set it down to 18, and then I'm going to rotate around to the second floor. All right, so that's kind of roughly where I want it. Again, I'm going to go up to the camera menu, go to Set View, Named Views, then Save a New View. Alright, so now on to rendering. <clears throat> so for this, I'm going to change back to my ground view. Now to get to the render options, what you can do is go to the Render Tools uh, toolbar here. So the third button from the right is the Render Settings. Another way you can get to the render options is if you just type in options. So under document properties, it'll be Rhino Render. So you have your resolution and the size. So for our board, we want to render these at 11 by 17. So you have that 17, 11 inches. In DPI, ideally this would be 300 to get like the maximum quality for the size. But you may want to do a test at a lower DPI, like 72 and see how long it takes your computer to do that and then you can try it again with a, a larger number. And then in these options you can also change the background color. Uh, you can put in a gradient or put in a background environment. And what's really helpful is if you're doing a render and you're going to put in your own sky behind it, you can click transparent background and this enables you to save it as a PNG file, the transparent background, so you don't have to do all the cutting out by, by yourself. Now I'm just going to leave that off 
leave our background at white, click OK, then click render. Alright, so that took about a minute to render. So once your render finishes running, you can make a few more adjustments before you save it. If it's over or underexposed, you can do a little bit of correction in the gamma correction. So you can bump the numbers up. This will bring the exposure up. If it's underexposed, then you can make that number less than 1 if it's overexposed. And also you can do stuff in post effects, like fog, or you can turn on the ISO curves. Are just the normal curves. So once you've decided on that, click the Save button. You can save it out in any of these file types. And then again, just to change to our other render to render that out, we go to Set View. We'll jump to our second floor render. Now it saves the camera location and the lens length, but it doesn't save your shadow settings. So we'll jump back to the sun panel, maybe change this a bit. You know, if you want to adjust the render size, open up the render properties, and then click render. Alright, so that one finished. We'll save it out again. And that's all there is to it.